Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Ashland Middle School for Ashland Legion Baseball. Tom Nappy alongside Larry Sacklad for this pride matchup, if you will, between post 77 and Waltham post 186. Ashland has already clinched up the one spot in the zone playoffs, but they are going to play today's game anyway, and I think they're going to play to win because they want to keep the hot streak going, getting the start today for post 77. It is Cole Glassburn. And in just a moment, we'll take you through the Waltham lineup as CJ Mills steps in. And it looks like they don't have numbers on the jerseys. That's interesting. So that is filed away, oh and one. It's an impoverished town, Waltham, so they can't afford numbers. <laughs> 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 C.J. Mills starting things off. Waltham has had a rough season, 0-12 overall. they got to say you're very subdued tonight, t Tom, compared to last night. Am I? Yes. There's a strike. You've dropped it down about 80%. Well, I couldn't hear myself last night most okay. of the game, so that might have had an impact. Wind up and the pitch to Mills. Inside, 2-1. and one. Here's the Waltham lineup, C.J. Mills. Leading things off, Matt Johnson, the shortstop, batting second. Matt O'Toole, the left fielder, hitting third. Justin Moran, the first baseman, hitting cleanup. James Guino, the pitcher, hitting fifth. Jonathan Hodge, the right fielder, hitting sixth. Alex Miller, the center fielder, hitting seventh. Wind up and the pitch. And that is outside, three and one. The catcher, Bobby Daly Jr., hitting eighth. Ryland Thomas, the second baseman, hitting ninth for Waltham. Going around the Ashland defense. Fly ball out of play. Dom Cavanaugh at third base. Jackson Hornung, the shortstop. Dante Divanzio at second base. Larry Tang at first base. Left field, Drew Rancatori. Center field, Brandon Grover. In right field, Nick Calabrese. Sean Jewett behind the plate, catching. The big, tall, lanky right-hander, Cole Glassburn. A leadoff walk to C.J. Mills. Matt Johnson will step in, the shortstop. One on, no outs for post-186. The fans still pouring in. <laughs> yeah, they're all going through security right now. This is up the left side, and that'll get through into left field. It'll be two on with no outs for Waltham. Hmm. Well, you got to imagine Waltham certainly hungry for a win, so. They had to fight traffic all the way here, so might as well play. i got to give them credit. I mean, they're 0-12, and this is the longest trip they have to take during the season. It's towards the end of the season, but they were able to field nine today, so that is certainly very respectable. First pitch is ball one to Matt O'Toole. Well, I don't know. Waltham to Lowell, that might be a... Uh, yeah, actually, that's a bit of a hike, too, huh? Yeah. It's all the same stuff when you're 0-12, right? All the rides are long. There's a strike. Uncle Glassburn certainly going to get some good experience on the mound today, I think. They'll use him as long as needed. Wind up and the pitch fouled away. One and two. That's a lost egg up in the woods. Somebody's going to have to shag that. We'll be operating in triple-digit temperatures this weekend at Mahan Field, depending Somebody on what will. time we draw for the playoffs. Cole steps off the back of the rubber. Cole Glassburn has thrown 12 and two-thirds of an inning this season, a 2.21 ERA, 2 and 0 oh on the mound. He pitched five and a third innings against Chemsford. And this is hit up the right side. That'll trickle in. Lead runner is going to be stopped at third. And it's bases loaded with no outs for Waltham. I'll bring up Justin Moran, the first baseman. Take you through the zone standings. 077, of course clinching the one seed in the playoffs. They're 13 and one overall. Natick 11 and four, Hudson nine and four. 
North Chelmsford nine and six. That pitch is low. Bill Ricca is eight and five. Lowell seven and four. Newton four and ten. And Waltham, I think they get two wins due to the Medford forfeit. So I think they're two and twelve. There's a strike. Yeah, it's a shame. Newton and Waltham used to be great baseball towns. They certainly were. This is up the right side. Throw from the first baseman, and they'll get the force out at home plate. Nice job by Tang. So hey, he went right home with it and then took a, a little shove from the hitter, but not intentional. So one away, bases still loaded. James Guino, the pitcher, will step in. Corner infielders on the grass. Second base and shorts up a double play depth. There's a strike. They're going for two up the middle, and they're going home on the corners. Down low. One and one. Got to wish Sean Babineau well tonight. He's the starting pitcher for the Futures All-Star game out in Pittsfield. Two and one. Has a ridiculous season so far, about a 1-3 ERA in a very, very competitive league. And this is hit up the left side. That'll get through. One run is in. Lead runner behind him being waved around. He's going to try to score. They're having trouble picking up that ball out there. Two runs are in. It's a 2 nothing Waltham lead. A two RBI hit for the pitcher, James Guino. Just like that. 2 nothing post 186. I'll wait an inning and see if this smells like a Bill Ricca game where 77 was just lulled to sleep. And this is hit in the air, right side, past the reach of Tang, it'll drop. Runner from third going to score, it's three nothing Waltham. Yeah, go, RBI single for Haj. Justin Morin comes around to score. Cole Glassburn might get the shower early if he doesn't pick things up. Alex Miller will step in. Certainly looking a bit different than he did in his last start. And yeah, he was nails. He didn't give up anything. Well, actually, it wasn't even a start. It was a relief appearance. He came in for Owen Ward, Owen Ward who was struggling yeah. and pitched five and two-thirds of an inning. He hits batsman. He hit him. A little off with the control today, so Miller down to first. Bases loaded for Waltham. That'll bring up Bobby Daly Jr., the catcher. So uh, you mentioned, Larry, about the zone playoffs. They start this weekend. Post-77 will play at either 4 or 7 o'clock oh. on Saturday. And then Sunday they are definitely playing, I've been told, but it's a time to be determined. So, Let's hope we draw the uh, cool time spot. I hope so. There's a strike to Bobby Daly Jr., the catcher. Glassburn deals, and this is up the right side foul. Lawrence Tang made sure that stayed foul. Didn't kick fair. Set to deal. That is a strike, two away. It'll bring up Ryland Thomas, the second baseman. Waltham has batted around. What do you bet uh, Coach Obid has a little conversation with the fellas when they come in? I'm sure he will. That was a quick pitch by Cole Glassburn. He just throws him. He doesn't give any warning. And that's a swing. 0-2. He's trying to check. Couldn't hold. So Sean Jewett's got to be ready for the quick pitch. Wind up and the pitch. And he gets him. Two straight strikeouts to wrap up the first. But Waltham bats around, plates three runs. It's 3 nothing. post-186. Heading to the bottom of the first on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the first, Waltham with a 3-0 lead. Let's take a look at the post-77 lineup. 
Leading things off, playing right field, Nick Calabrese. Brendan Grover, the center fielder, batting second. Jackson Horning, the shortstop, hitting third. Dom Cavanaugh, the third baseman, hitting cleanup. Sean Jewett, the catcher, hitting fifth. Cole Glassburn, the pitcher, hitting sixth. Lawrence Tang, the first baseman, hitting seventh. Drew Rancatori, left fielder, hitting eighth. And Dante Diavanzo, the second baseman, hitting ninth. For 13-1, and one, post-77. And now with the Waltham defense, here's Larry Sacklad. Thank you, Tom. Third baseman tonight is C.J. Mills. Matt Johnson playing shortstop. Rhineland Thomas at second base. Justin Moran at first. Matt O'Toole at left. Alex Miller in center. Jonathan Huddy in right. Bobby Daly Jr. behind the plate, catching James Guineau. And there you have it. Waltham with a nice lead to start this one off. And they would certainly like to pick up a win here in Ashland and break that no win record. Nick Calabrese will start things off. He has hit the ball pretty well this season, batting a 300. 364 on base percentage, eight RBIs. Been hot lately. Certainly has. Has also scored five runs this year. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. Ashland Bench taking a look at Gwinnell. Probably for the first time this year. See what he's got. The 0-1. Outside, one and one. Post 77 defeated Waltham in Waltham, seven to three earlier this season. Here's the one one. Hit high in the air over to left field and caught. One away. It'll bring up Brendan Grover, the center fielder. Grover hitting a 419 on the season. 500 on base percentage. He has scored 12 runs and driven in nine. He's just a good all around ball player. And he'll get a piece of this one up the right side and dropped by the second baseman. He'll reach on the error. Oh, you're tough, you're tough. You're giving him an error? Uh, I guess it could be a single. It was a difficult play to make, but I just thought it was going right for his glove. It fell out. So. Well, I understand it hit his glove, but he had to go good good distance to put a glove on it. Yeah, I'm keeping the air. He dropped it. All right, let's see if Jackson Horning <laughs> triples. No. And this is up the left side, handled by the third baseman. Throw to first, no problem. Two-way. Grover advances to second. Five to three on the out. Dom Cavanaugh to the plate. Dom Cavanaugh had a pregame meal tonight of a steak sandwich from a deli nearby, some French fries. Didn't share it with uh, any member of the broadcast crew. But there is a piece of steak behind the dugout if you want to indulge, Tom. Uh, good right now. One of the dogs around here might go over there and nab it. It's fouled away. Oh, and one. Cavanaugh hitting a 379 on the Legion season. 538 on base percentage, 10 runs driven in, 13 scored. He has been pretty impressive with the bat. And on the mound, too. He had one of the more dominant performances we've got on uh, YouTube against Hudson Post 100. Certainly did. There's a breaking pitch for a strike. Hmm. If I'm not mistaken, I believe James Guineau, the pitcher, is the ace for Waltham. He's tall enough to be an ace. And you will check it on the runner, runner back to the bag. Up high. One and two is the count. 
this point in the year, if Waltham's got an ace, they might as well play it. No pun on card games or anything. There is a walk. Or did it hit him? Either one. I believe it hit him. Unless I was severely wrong on the count. No, I, th I think it hit him. That'll bring up Sean Jewett. Yeah, I believe, because he kind of looked at the umpire. And the umpire just tapped his forearm, so that's probably where he got him. Wind up and the pitch, down low. Jewett has hit the bo ball extremely well this season. 452 batting average, 574 on base percentage. Has cooled off maybe a tad as of late. Yeah, about 50 points worth, at least. 15 RBIs, 12 runs scored for Jewett. Gets a piece of this one up the left side, foul. Two on, four post 77, two outs, a three nothing lead for Waltham. Upstairs. Jake. Obed. Stop saying that in the headset, Larry. <laughs> we are live. Shh. Larry trying to call the coach because it's a baseball. If he's smart, he could just roll it back towards the dugout. I'm not smart. We know. Everybody knows <laughs> that. Wind up and the pitch. Up high. Good take by Sean Jewett. Three and one. Gwinnow's got uh, not a hard breaking pitch, sort of a rolling breaking pitch. Gwinnow must be at least 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, There's a walk. Base is loaded. Cole Glassburn stepping in, a chance to help his own cause here. Glasper in a 393 on the season, 452 on base percentage. Last night he hit a monster double about 340 feet. Wasn't able to get three bags out of it because of his uh, lack of speed. There's a strike. Base is full of post 77. Two outs, though. Time called by the hitter. Very humid night. I'd hate to be behind the plate with a chest protector on. It certainly is. My glasses keep fogging up. I pitch outside. Lawrence Tang on deck. Good looking 15 year old. The 1 1. Up high. Two out runners will be going on contact. That gets away from the catcher. Lead runner going to score. It's three to one. Brennan Grover comes around on the very wild pitch. Kavanaugh up to third, Jewett up to second. Sorry, Cole, no RBI. Line up and the pitch. There's a strike. Cole was heading down towards first base. Cole was down in the Washington, D.C. area this past weekend with his Goyle, checking out his new digs at Catholic University where he's going to be studying architecture. 
Swing and a miss, gets away from the catcher, throw to first, no problem. And that'll wrap up the inning. But post 77 does play to run, it's three to one as we head to the top of the second on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the second inning, a 3-1 to one lead for Waltham. They batted around last inning. So it's back to the top of the order. C.J. Mills will step in. Post 77 is wrapped up. The first spot in the Zone 5 playoffs. Which means they'll be the home team in Natick throughout all the zone playoffs as this is going to trickle into left field for a leadoff single. Mills one for one with a walk. He seems like the pesky type. Certainly does. Cole throws it in the low 80s. Mills is not a particularly big kid, but he was able to get around on that pitch. Matt Johnson steps in. There's a strike. If Cole struggles, Owen Ward's going to be next out of the pen. Strike two. If you've seen 77 baseball earlier games, you've seen Cole Glassburn pitch from all sorts of angles, pick over, not in time. He'll quick pitch, will drop down to the side. Upstairs. Throw straight over the top like that. Deception is his game. Fouled away. That one got in on the hands of the Waltham hitter. Certainly did. It's almost a protective swing. There's strike three, one away. Back to the bench. Matt O'Toole step in. That's the third strikeout of the game for Glassburn. Fouled away. As I mentioned, Cole's due for 30 or 40 pitches. Probably thrown 25 so far. Wind up in the pitch. He's got a decent breaking pitch, nothing great. And he hit him. He's good at hitting kids. <laughs> it's his second, I think. Excellent at that. Coach Jake Obid's going to go out and have a discussion with Cole Glassburn. Justin Morin will step in. Even though they've already clinched the first spot in his own playoffs, I think Coach Obid certainly wants his team to win this game and going go into the playoffs on a winning trend. They've got Natick tomorrow night that you told me earlier is playing for something. Yeah, Natick's in the playoffs, but they're fighting for seeding. So tomorrow's game, certainly important to Natick. Well, I'm just glad we don't have to go there. They've got to come here. And Natick actually right now is in second place in the zone. They have, well actually they're tied with Hudson for second place. That loss yesterday certainly didn't help Hudson's cause. I enjoyed it. Oh, I thought it was great. The fans enjoyed it. It was a rather lopsided game. It certainly was. Glassburn threatens the throw over, but the runner is back. Sort of an inside move to just let the runner know he knows he's there. Foul away. Now. 
Wind up and the pitch. Hit high in the air. It is in fair territory now, foul territory, but Glasper makes the catch. Two away. James Guineau, the pitcher, will step in. Looks like a Waltham player is trying to get a ball on top of the dugout. That's low, Renner taking off for third, the throw over. And the umpire says the ball hit the ground, so the runner is safe. Sneaky C.J. Mills. Showing up the wheels. So it's runners on the corners for Waltham with two outs. James Guineau had a two RBI double last inning for Waltham. And he'll get a piece of this up the left side, foul. Maybe Mills is a ringer, doesn't have a number. <laughs> yeah, I guess he just forgot the jersey. He actually came in a different uh, style uniform, white with green lettering. Ah. So the 77 team said, hey, kid, you're at the wrong field. I wonder if he showed up in the uh, wrong jersey for Waltham. No, no. Didn't, didn't say Waltham on it. It was scripted jersey. Not Didn't resemble anything they're wearing now. Runner with a lead on first. Glasper and Deals filed away. Some football practice going on in the turf field. Well, that ball ended up. What kind of football, American or European? Uh, come on, Tom. <laughs> Runner taking off from first, hit in the air, right field, and it's caught. For the third out in very shallow right field, it is a three to one game as we head to the bottom of the second on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the second inning, a three to one lead for Waltham, due up for post 77, seven, eight, and nine. Lawrence Tang, Drew Rancatori, Dante Diavanzo. Lawrence Tang, a 333 on the season and 12 plate appearances, nine at bats, 455 on base percentage. Lawrence Tang, a fan favorite, young man out of Hopkinton. There's a strike. Wind up and the pitch. Foul. Jackson Horning catching some bullpen. I hope he knows what he's doing over there. Looks kind of funny with a Catcher's mint in his hand. Hope he doesn't get hurt. Wind up and the pitch. Hit in the air, right side, foul. Set to deliver. It's fouled away. Larry out of Belmont Hill. He's, joy is, he's really enjoying his time with older kids this summer. Breaking pitch up high. He's bigger than three quarters of the team. Wind up and the pitch. He'll get a piece of this one. That's a fair ball. Slow roller picked up by the second baseman. Throw to first in time. He hustled. He didn't give up. Almost beat it out. Ball had some backspin. Tough play by the second baseman. Drew Rancatori will step in. In 
inside. Spoke to Drew before the game. His hamstring is improving, albeit slowly. Wind up in the pitch inside. He heard it in an exhibition game tuning up for the playoffs at Hopkins and High against Silver Lake and just hasn't, hasn't recovered from that fully. 2-0. Ball three. Set to deliver. Inside, there's a four pitch walk. That'll bring up Dante Diavanzo. One on, one out. He was ripping him in batting practice this afternoon. Long before you arrived, Tom. Well, I had to do all the prep work yeah, for the game. I know. You don't help me with any of it. Okay, that's correct. I'm <laughs> technically challenged. Wind up and the pitch down low. If Gwinnell only knew that uh, <laughs> regulatory can't run, he wouldn't pay attention over there. Well, if they watch any of the broadcasts at all, they know that. Inside. Oh, Pretty sure you say that once a game. Yeah. But I was watching National Geographic last night and watching these sub-Saharan Africans uh, chase a giraffe. They needed some food. Wind up and the pitch. Oh, up high. And they shot this giraffe. They chased it for like three days, and they must have hit it with 50 arrows. Wow. Yep. And that giraffe ran like Drew Rankatori runs. Finally, they got him. They pulled him down. Poor guy. Tough, tough being a giraffe in Africa these days. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Three and one. Supposedly it's pretty tasty, but can't find it at any of your local markets. Yeah, I wouldn't want to eat one of those. Nice this is hit. ripped in a left field. That'll get down for a hit. It'll be runners on first and second with one out. That's what he was doing in batting practice early on. Nick Calabrese will step in. Well, he's going to turn over the lineup. Hey, Calabrese, 300 on the season, 364 on base percentage. Takes a strike there. Absolutely no media here tonight compared to last night where media passes were tough to come by. Just swarms of media. Every major paper that was local inside move by Guano. Nothing happening. They were swarming for post game interviews and everything. That's right. That was a big one yesterday, local matchup. And this is a bunt, and it is a fair ball. Throw to first, not in time. Everyone's safe. Oh, that's catcher indecision. Should I pick it up, or should I try and wait for it to go foul? That ball was three feet up the baseline, but Calabrese didn't stare and look at it. He just took off. I'll bring up Grover. Base is juiced. Got a chance to open things up here. Picks that one up high. Well, if Gonneau thinks he's going to get some extra juice on his fastball, this is a great fastball hitting team. Better off doing that. There's a strike.
How many how many mercies does seventy seven have this year? Three or four? Something like that, yeah. Yeah. I believe it is four. Mm. Not counting Medford's forfeits. Right. Well, those aren't mercies. Those are just forfeit wins. Well, you score them. Uh, uh, score them seven nothing. Yes. Swing and a miss. Just two, missed. Two and two. Gonna reach back for a little extra on that. Take a look at what's going on in some of the other zones as we near the state. Playoffs. State playoffs start Saturday the 27th. Swing and a miss there. Out number two. Bases loaded. Four post 77. That'll bring up Jackson Horning. This is the second time this game. Post 77 has had the bases loaded. In zone four, Milford clinched the one spot in the zone four playoffs. They're 19 and three. Lemonster is the second spot at 19 and three. Shrewsbury the third at 18 and four. That pitch inside. In zone six, Hyde Park and Quincy are both 13 and four. Franklin 15 and two. Walpole 12 and five. Those are the teams at the top of zone six. Wind up and the pitch. Up high, nearly got away. In zone nine, up at the top is South Attleboro at 12 and three. They clinched the one spot in the zone nine playoffs. Somerset 11 and four, New Bedford nine and five. And then in zone 10, look out for Sandwich, 18 and 0 on the season. They are the one spot in the zone 10 playoffs. Wareham is 14 and three. There's a strike. Yeah, Somerset uh, made it into the States a couple of years ago. Post-77 absolutely destroyed them. Well, do you remember who made it into the regionals last year? Actually won the regionals as this is up the middle, past the dive of the shortstop. Rankatori is in. Here comes another run. Diavanzo is in. And we are knotted up at three apiece. A two RBI single for Harning. Yeah, Post-77. Uh, they got some good team speed. Good, smart base runners, too. Uh, I would say that would be Shrewsbury or Braintree. It was Braintree. Uh, Braintree went to the uh, Super 8. Dom Cavanaugh will step in. The Womps or something they're called? Well, that's the high school, but Braintree and Legion is post-86. There's a strike. I'll have to find out what a womp is in between innings. Womp, womp, womp. Cool. Oh. <laughs> There's a strike. A little smirk from Dom Cavanaugh. He was voted yesterday by the fans having the best hair. That was the vote. Wind up and the pitch. Upstairs. The, also, the fan vap balloting was uh, Sam Farrell was voted the best derriere yesterday by the fans. Can't make this stuff up. It really? happens. They have, they have an award for that now? I, look, I'm just reporting what I heard. Back pick. Ooh, the ball got away from the first baseman. He couldn't find it for a moment. I heard you were voted uh, no, no. Best, best announcer. No, not true. You were so loud last night, I thought you were on some type of medication. <laughs> it wasn't that loud. It, it was really bad. Really? There's a strike. And it's a strike three. Three to three. We'll head to the top of three. We're tuned in to Ashland Legion Baseball on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the third inning. Do up six, seven, and eight for Waltham, Jonathan Hodge, Alex Miller, and Bobby Daly Jr. We have a new pitcher 
Owen Ward is out there to take over for Cole Glassburn. Coach Obed did say that these next couple games it will be by committee on the mound. Keep everybody fresh. That's a smart maneuver by Coach Obed. Already a good sign. Owen Ward ahead of the hitter, 0-2 after his last outing where he couldn't get anybody out. He's hit high in the air, very high in the air. Ward ranging back. He's called off. It's caught by Tomaselli, one away. Tomaselli over at first base, taking over for Tang. Alex Miller will step in. Cole Glassburn out of the game. Wasn't put in in his normal second base position. He's got to ride the pine the rest of the way. There's a strike. Owen Ward out of Holliston. Be a senior next year. Fouled away. The 0 2. Swing and a miss, out number two. That'll bring up Bobby Daly Jr., the catcher. One thing we don't have is what Owen Ward's pitching stats were. Uh, unfortunately, our research department Failed to provide that for us. We'll just say he did well. Fouled away. What do you mean, for Legion? No, uh, our research department didn't get his high school stats for his pitching line. Got to talk to them about that in the morning. I believe that was your job. <laughs> Fouled away. Saw your girl Bunny today. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes. She asked for you. Fouled away. Bunny on the bus. In high school, Owen Ward went one and four on the mound, 375 ERA, 12 appearances. So the research department did provide those stats. They left me out no, out you, of the you, distribution list. You have list. them. I'm sure, I, I'm sure you just lost them. No. <laughs> didn't happen. Whatever you say, Larry. It's just the stapler didn't go through that last page, whatever it is. Ah. I can prove it to you, and then I'll show it to the camera that there's no pitching stats up high <clears throat> one and two swing and a miss easy inning for Owen Ward out number three we will head to the bottom of the third we are knotted up at three apiece on the Ashton Legion Baseball Network Bottom of the third inning, due up for post 77, 5, 6, and 7. Sean Jewett, Cole Glassburn, and Matt Tomaselli, who took over for Lawrence Tang at first base. Jewett steps in to face James Garino. And this is hit up the left side. That's going to trickle into left field. I think Owen Ward's going to hit for Glassburn. Makes sense, pitcher for pitcher swap. You would be correct. Naturally. Well, I wouldn't go that far. Well, Coach Obed's going to say, hey, you want to lay down a bunt or not? Move the runner over. This is a very important inning for Co uh, Post 77. They want to put Waltham away in the rearview mirror, grab a bunch of runs, and coast the rest of the way. There's a bunt foul. I got a feeling that's what they talked about. Well, 
Well, I think uh, C.J. Mills uh, saw that little meeting, and that's why he's playing way in. Check it out first, runner back safe. Seen a lot of games this year, uh, Tom, but never seen a third baseman in as shallow as C.J. Mills. There's a ball. Oh, Ward, I think, hit about 380 this year at Halston. I think that's what you mentioned. And he's not a very good bunter. He's had two weak attempts. So he's hitting away. One and two is the count. Runner back safe. Waltham definitely doesn't want this game to get away, get away from them. And this is up the left side, past the dive of the shortstop. No outs, two on. Maybe you ought to stick to hitting and leave bunting for some other time. I'll bring up Matt Tomaselli. Going to get through, both runners will advance. Ward up to second, Jouette up to third. Matt Johnson, the shortstop, try to quickly sneak in behind Sean Jewett, but by that point, the ball is a pass the catcher. There's a strike. Left side of the Waltham infield is in, but the right side, second baseman now, they're all in. Outside. They don't know what type of power MT Matt Tomaselli has. This is up the middle, grabbed by the shortstop, throw to first. They'll get the out at first, and now Jouette trying to score, and he's safe. 4-3, post 77. Good fadeaway slide by Sean Jewett. It was closer play than what I thought it would be, but he had a fade away from the catcher to get through. So it ends up being a sacrifice RBI ground out for Thomas Selly. Now Drew Rancatori steps in. The infield stays in for Waltham. I really thought Matt Tomaselli was going to go yard in that at bat, but an RBI is still pretty good. It certainly is. Up the right side, fielded by the first baseman. He'll run over, step on the bag for the out. Three unassisted, four out number two. Ward stays put at third. Divanzo to the plate. The heads up play by Moran, getting the ball, looking Owen Ward back, and then touching first base. Divanzo 0 for 1, has doubled and scored today. There's a strike. Divanzo had a line drive hit between third and short earlier. Oh, upstairs. Never seen so many dogs in attendance, Tom. Yeah, I guess it's dog day here. Yes, dog days of summer. That's what I hear anyway. That's a good one. 
This is ripped up the middle, and that'll get through. Ward around to score. It's 5-3. to three. I told you you had a good BP. If right. you got down here earlier, you would have been able to see it. RBI single. That'll bring up Nick Calabrese. Well, as I said, I was doing all the prep yeah, work. Yeah, yeah. You just show up, really. But, well, I showed up two hours before game time. <laughs> How do you like that? You got nothing else to do. They were out of Fritos down at the mobile station. I was a little upset about that. That's inside. Ooh, I'm sorry. It's another FCC violation. Corn chips is what I was looking for. <laughs> Pick over, not in time. Not close. If Guineau's feet were a little quicker, he might have a really good move. Up high. Every time he throws, wants to throw with a little extra, it's high and out of the zone. He did get uh, Calabrese, I think, earlier on a high. Down low, gets away from the catcher. Up to second goes Diavanzo. Was it Grover that struck out, or Calabrese that struck out on that high pitch? That was Grover last inning. Yeah. Gonneau just spiked that one. The catcher had no chance. Got to be scored a wild pitch. Owen Ward pacing behind the dugout like a caged animal. Wants to get out back, back out on the mound. Wind up in the pitch. There's a strike. Back to second. Threat to check in by Guiono. Hit high in the air, and this is in fair territory for the moment, and it's caught for the third out of the inning. But two more runs, score for post 77. And they lead it 5-3 to three as we head to the top of the fourth on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the fourth inning, a 5-3 to three post-77 lead. Stepping in is the ninth hitter in the lineup for Waltham, Ryland Thomas. First pitch is a ball. Ryland Thomas, C.J. Mills, Matt Johnson do up. Fouled away. Two and one. There's a strike. You know, from Waltham, who's been impressive, is the kid that came down the wrong uniform, C.J. Mills. There's strike three. How about Owen Ward since coming in? He has three strikeouts. Totally different pitcher than last week. C.J. Mills will step in. Some days you just don't have it. And that day he just didn't have it. That's right. Down low. Swing and a miss. Yeah, he... C.J. Mills, a tough little customer. He got a little taunting from the uh, Ashland dugout and stared in. 
Up the left side, glove by Kavanaugh. Throw to third, not a problem. Two away. I'll bring up Matt Johnson. I don't know whether he uh, pulled the groin going down there on the first base. Yeah, he might have. Well, <laughs> looked like he wasn't uh, making a mad dash for the bag, but. Yep. Waltham uh, gets an injury. They could be in trouble here. They only I got nine players available today. I still think he can play with eight. I don't believe so. I have to check in with uh, Coach Obed between innings. You could have to start with nine. You have to play with nine. You have to start with nine. <laughs> uh, I guess it's not like girls softball. You can play with eight. I don't know. Oh. Some nice words oh. from J Coach Obed. Oh. <laughs> can the camera read lips? I think you do deserve that, too. Oh. <laughs> oh. We... I'll take my uh, headset and go home. Down low. Oh. Two so. and two is the count. One strike away from ending the fourth. See ya. it. Sit down. One, two, three, they go to the bottom of the fourth. We go five to three, post 77 on either HCAM and Hopkins at WACA TV in Ashland or HCAT in Halston. Bottom of the fourth inning, two, three, and four do up. Brennan Grover, Jackson Horning, Dom Kavanaugh. Five to three, post 77, leading Waltham. They're 13 and one. They've clinched the one seed, but why not try to. Rack up another win or two. Fouled away and miscommunication. No one got to it. Should have been caught, but miscommunication between the left fielder and third baseman. Inside. The one one down low. Two one, hit in the air over to right field, and that is going to bounce in front of the wall. Here goes Grover to second. He's heading to third. The throw in is going to be off the mark, and it's a stand-up triple to start off the bottom of the fourth. We'll bring up Jackson Ornung. That was a long hit there by Grover. Wind up in the pitch, up high, nearly got away from the catcher. Fouled away, right towards us. Look out. Thought Larry was going to take one there. Larry's still trying to look up if you could play with eight or not. Even though the coach of the team gave him the answer. Fouled away. That was the closest. All right, I, I get the answer I need in Major League Baseball anyway. If a team doesn't or refuses to play with nine players, it results in a forfeit. Yep, see? 
Well, he didn't have to uh, use bad words at me. <laughs> In the air to center field, it's caught. Runner from third going to tag. Here comes Grover. He'll score with ease. A sacrifice RBI fly out for Jackson Hornung. And it is a 6-3 to three game. But if this were Little League, you could start a game with eight players. But unfortunately, we're way past Little League. Dom Cavanaugh whiffed his last plate appearance. Up high. Perhaps uh, it was just, the reason he whiffed was he had that steak sandwich before the game. It's possible. And that hit him. That's because he had that steak sandwich before the game. I'll bring up Sean Jewett. One out, one on, one in. Six to three, post 77. Well, Dom's been known to be a hitter now and then. So, it's fair play. There's a strike. Jewett had a solid hit up the middle of his last plate appearance. Starting to heat back up again. Check it out first. Runner slides back safe. Not a huge lead, a little closer than it should have been. And this is up the left side foul. Coach Obid with a nice play. Well, it could have kicked fair if uh, Coach Obid didn't pick up the ball. <laughs> Got to let it get past the bag before you start touching things. <laughs> and he shouldn't say mean things to the broadcasters. <laughs> Well, with you, it's okay. This is driven into center field. That'll drop down for a hit. Kavanaugh around second, heading to third. He'll get there with ease. A single for Jewett. Dom Kavanaugh now at third. Runners on the corners, one out. And that is going to bring up Owen Ward. Nobody warming up in the Waltham bullpen. Well, they only have nine, so whoever they're going to bring oh. in relief is on the field. Oh, they couldn't put anybody in the bullpen. Because then they have eight players, and then they have to forfeit. I get you. Yes. There you go, Larry. You're catching on. Runner taking off from first. Throw to second. There will be no throw. They're trying to bait the catcher to throw to second, so Kavanaugh could try to score. Bobby Daly Jr. was having none of that. Because Sean Jewett's a speed merchant. That's going to get by the catcher. Here comes Kavanaugh, and he will score. Wild pitch allows Kavanaugh to score. Actually, I'm giving that a pass ball. I think. I, I would have given it a pass ball. Yep, I am. I changed it. I changed my ruling. Seven to three, post seventy-seven. A couple more runs, and they can uh, turn out the lights on Waltham. Well, they need another eight <laughs> for the mercy rule. Well, no, I meant not the mercy, but you just, just suck the life out of them. Wind up in the pitch. Fouled away. I've already determined Owen Ward can't bunt, right? So he doesn't have the bunt sign. He did have a nice base hit his last plate appearance after two failed bunt attempts. Waltham infield in all the way around. Gets a piece of this one over to center field. Caught. Runner from third going to tag. Here comes Jewett, and he will score. Sacrifice RBI fly out for Owen Ward. Kind of an ugly slide by Sean Jewett. I like the one that uh, he did earlier that had a higher degree of difficulty. If we were rating pizza, 
that would have been about a 2.6, and the earlier one would have been a 8.8. <laughs> Great they analysis. call me El Presidente. Great analysis, Larry. Well, the other one was a beautiful slide. That one was horrible. Yeah, you know what? They scored a run. That's all it matters. That's right. And this is up the right side. That's going to trickle into right field, a two-out single for Tomaselli. That'll bring up Drew Rancatori. So I put bug spray on just about everywhere except my hand, and, of course, that's where I got bit. Oh, I told you it's a conspiracy with the mosquito spray companies. They attract mosquitoes, so you'll buy more. I got bit right on Right the in hands. the hand. It's going to irritate me the rest of the game. Fouled away. Very anxious fans are going to pick up that ball. <laughs> Good hustle by that fan down there. Runner taking off from first, hit in the air, over to right field, caught. And that'll do it for the inning. We will head to the top of the fifth, post 77, with an 8-1 to one lead on the Ashland Legion, 8-3 to three lead on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the fifth inning, an 8-3 to three lead for post 77. Owen Ward on the mound, and he came in in, in relief in the third inning, and he has pitched two, one, two, three innings. Three, four, and five do up for Waltham. Matt O'Toole, Justin Morin, and James Guiono. First pitch is a ball. And this is driven into left center and a dive and is that caught? Yes it is, one away, what a catch by Grover. That'll bring up Justin Morin. Hit high in the air, right side, caught by Thomas Selly. Two away. James. Giono, the pitcher, takes strike one. Line up and the pitch, down low. Two and one. Strike two. Here's the two two. Just low. That catch was okay out in center field by Grover. Certainly was. Filed away. I mean, he made it look harder than it really was. No. He laid out for that one. That was one of the better catches we've seen all year. That was a great dive. I didn't think he was going to get to it. Up the left side. That's a fair ball. Oh, Brooks Robinson over there. Dom Cavanaugh with a nice play. Five to three, four out number three. 
We are moving along to the bottom of the fifth, post 77 with an 8-3 lead on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Ashland Legion Baseball on either WACA TV in Ashland, HCAM in Hopkinton, or HCAT in Holliston. Due up for post 77, 9 1 and 2. Dante Diavanzo, Nick Calabrese, and Brendan Grover. Diavanzo's hit the ball hard today. Uh, the looming question is whether Sean Jewett will lose the tools of ignorance for the first time this year. Let somebody else catch an inning. Alex Miller is the new pitcher for Waltham. He Al. In. They call him Al. Uh, Al Miller. Okay, there you go. He moves right. in from center field. I believe the starting pitcher moved over to right field. Take over for Jonathan Hodge, and Hodge is now in center. I think uh, Dante Diavanzio could be in the running for the Gandhi Award. How hard he's hit the ball today. Yeah, he is two for two. Has driven in a run and scored a run. Gets away from the catcher, two and one. We can't give Grover twice in a row for that outstanding catch in center field. That would be quite unfair. But we'll see if we see Jackson Hornung behind the plate. Hit high in the air over to center field, and it's caught. Well, Post 77 trying to add a little insurance here. Nice 8-3 to three lead here in the bottom of the fifth. Waltham will be down to their final six outs. Give Waltham credit, though. They could have hitched up their wagon and ran out of town. Yep. Hello. Al Miller comes right over the top. Don't forget, Saturday, the Zone 5 playoffs will start at Mahan Field in Natick. Post 77, either playing at 4 or 7 p.m. on Saturday, and then they'll have a Sunday game at a time to be determined. Al kind of reminds me of Joe Kelly. Sort of got... Uh, Good velocity for a small kid. Down low. Joe Kelly the other night was throwing on national TV 100, 9,900 every pitch. He was. He must weigh about 170 pounds, soak of wet. A little wild, though. Hey, stage fright. There's a strike. Coach Obid with a nice block of my view there. Well, actually, he blocked the camera, so you couldn't see. Foul the way. Oh, somebody on that ball. Go we'll get it, Larry. Seven bucks. That's unbelievable. Hey, it's a racket. Line up in the pitch. Inside, and that's a walk. One out walk. Brennan Grover will step in. He tripled his last time up. The stand-up variety. I still can't give him the Gandhi, though. Two games in a row. I thought it should have went to Ben Fink the last game, but... We'll get a piece so of this voted. foul territory. Or no, actually, that's fair territory. Caught by the third baseman. C.J. Mills. Two away. Jackson Horning will step in. Right now, Sean Babineau should be taking the mound in the Futures All-Star game. Fouled away. Aside from coming to a post-77 playoff game, what is it like to go to a Worcester Braveheart game, Tom? It's a good time. Great atmosphere, great baseball. Beautiful stadium. Great place for the whole family. 
Wind up and the pitch. This is up the left side. Takes a hop to the shortstop throw to first, and it gets away from the first baseman. Lead runner going to head to third. It'll be runners on the corners with two outs. So Horning reaches on the error. What's the cost to get into a Braveheart game? Five, I think you can get in for as little as five bucks. Five bucks. Does that include a hot dog and a soda? No. Dom Kavanaugh got hit by a pitch his last time up. He's walked and been hit by a pitch as well as scored a run. Runner from first taken off as this is hit in the air over to center field. It's caught for the third and final out. We'll head to the top of the sixth of eight to three. Post 77 lead on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the sixth inning, an eight to three lead for post 77. Waltham down to their final six outs. Six, seven, and eight do up. Wind up and the pitch, fouled away. Well, Owen Ward keeping the ball low. That's why he's been so effective today compared to his last outing. The 0-1, up high. As soon as I say that, he throws one nearly over the hitter's head. Jinxed okay. him, Larry, you jinxed him. Uh. Hey, do you ever watch uh, horse racing? Uh, from time to time. Well, you know that uh, the English, you know, really love their horse racing. You know, the, the derbies, you know, they call them. There was this horse race last weekend was like eight horses all neck and neck. Swing and a miss. Uh, the only reason I mention it, because the announcer was having a tough time calling the horse race. There was a horse in there named Hoof Hearted. That is fouled away. And he won by a nose. Very funny. No, I'm just saying. I mean, the name itself was was ingenious. That is pretty genius. Up the left side, handled by Kavanaugh. Throw to first. No problem. Five to three. Tomaselli's really sticking the landings over at first base. Alex Miller will step in. Well, the last regular season game for post 77 is scheduled right here tomorrow night, but rain could be a factor. Well, you know, when you name horses, I think you're limited. Oh, that gets through the uh, left side of the infield. You can only use like 17 letters. So that's why they, you know, sometimes use some vowels to form a word, that kind of stuff. I'll bring up Bobby Daly Jr., the catcher. Isn't that interesting? Very interesting. So hoof-hearted, if you say it really fast, uh, that's what the announcer on the uh, horse race did. Ah, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Hey, it's a clever name. I got to give the <laughs> owner credit. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you brought that little factoid to the broadcast. There's a strike. Hey, you, you used a curse word yesterday. I That wasn't a curse word. When did I use a curse word? Well, a word that used to be a curse word, okay? I don't know what you're talking about. Begins with an S and ends in an S. And there's a U in there. Fouled away. Ooh. Waltham taking a chance to let the runner loose. They're still playing. Up the left side, handled by Horning. Throw to first, a long throw. It's going to sail. Over Thomas Selly's head, and everyone's going to advance. So that is a single for Daly. That was nearly an impossible play to make. There uh, was an error allowing the advance. Maybe that's the worst play I've ever seen him make. 
That'll bring up Ryland Thomas, the second baseman. He's entitled. But oh my goodness. It happens. It's too much Dominican time. You raided that mini bar. Wow. Down low, briefly got away from Jewett. Jewett was supposed to get a couple innings off tonight, he told me before game, but apparently he's going to get ridden the whole way. Swing and a miss. Owen Wood really dealing now. There's the 1-1, one, one, and this is up the middle. Back to Ward, oh, and the no. runner slips going down the base path towards home plate. Ward flips the third, and he didn't get him. The runner just got back to the bag before Kavanaugh was able to lay the tag, and it's going to be bases loaded. Ooh, that was a little bit of a rundown boner there. That'll bring up C.J. Mills. Little fundamental failure when you... Running the runner back to the bag. You got to give up the ball. So it's one out, bases loaded for Waltham. Swing and a miss. Throw to third. And that briefly got away from Kevin. I picked up the ball, nearly got a tag on him. Up the left side, is that fair? No. Oh, and two. Well, Mills is uh, one for two today with a walk, a run scored, and a stolen base. I like Mills, he's a good little player. Swing and a miss. Throw to first. They got him. There's an out. That'll wrap up the inning. The strikeout. And they back pick to first to catch Ryland Thomas sleeping. That, and just like that, you get two outs. That could be a Gandhi uh, nomination right there for a back pick. Certainly could be. That was very impressive stuff from Jewett. And we will head to the bottom of the sixth, an 8-3 post-77 lead on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the sixth inning, Andrew Sternick pinch hitting for Sean Jewett. And I guess uh, it'll be Jackson Horning taking over behind the plate next inning. He wanted an opportunity to catch an inning, so Coach Obed's going to give him one. Dernick hitting a 273. Brandon Grover warming up in the bullpen. He looks like he's coming in in a non save situation. The 1 1. Swing and a miss. Wicked cut by Sternick. Walt Dam will be down to their final three outs next inning. And post 77. Three outs away from improving to 14 and one. Down low. Andrew looking to go 328 right here. Down low. That'll fill up the count. Alex Amalfi with a little piece of aluminum. Lawrence Tang is going to get back on the lineup. 
That is a fair ball, gloved by the third baseman. Throw to first is going to get away from the first baseman. It took a bounce on its way there. And Sternick will get to advance to second. That was a tough play to make, but I got to give the error there on the throw. You got to give it to Millsy? He's played a great game. <laughs> I, I got to give an error on the first baseman. He should have picked it. Should have picked it. Cole Glassburn steps in, hitting for Owen Ward. I believe he had a horrible uh, at bat his what? first time up. Is that true? Uh, he struck out. Yeah, he struck out and he tried to run down the first to grab a bag and he was thrown out, I think. Swing and a miss. Owen, two. He hit a ball about 338 feet last night and only got two. And get nothing tonight. It's a horrible ball player, that kid. <laughs> so mean, Larry. From Hopkinton, what do you want? Let's start calling you mean, Larry. I don't know. He's from Clarksville, Maryland. Everybody at home. Here's the one, two. This is up the right side. That'll trickle into right field. And there's a nice uh, plate appearance for Goldblatt, uh, Glassburn. Even a blind squirrel can find a nut every once in a while. <laughs> I almost called him Blastburn there. Yeah. Uh, his girlfriend Myrtle is going to be real proud of him when he goes home. Lawrence Tang will step in. Two on, no outs. Can you imagine if he gets hitched to her? Myrtle Glassburn. Anyway, Lawrence Tang is at the plate. Runners at first and third. It's going to get by. Here comes Sternick. He'll score with ease. Nine to three. A wild pitch allows Sternick to score. Glassburn up to second. He was eyeing third base. Certainly was. He thought he could maybe walk down the third base without anybody noticing him. That would have been a little bush, I think, though, at this point. Check swing. Didn't hold. Or did he? I think he held. I think he did. One and one. Hit high in the air, foul territory, and dropped. The pitcher can't make the catch. E1. Got to give the pitcher an error on that. I'm sorry. Tang steps back in. One and two is the count. Down low. And the runner from second going to advance to third. It briefly got away from the catcher and Glassburn advances. Pass ball there. Wow. Lawrence Tang laid down a beautiful sacrifice bunt last night. Or the night before. Anyway, it was a nice bunt. Wind up in the pitch. There's a strike. Get some looking. One away. He gets the bad news from the home plate umpire. We're going to have Alex Amalfi come in to pinch hit for Drew Rankatori. He doesn't know that he was facing his uh, new teammate. And Bill Ricca, James Allegra, the third baseman, is going to be a Boston, UMass Boston beacon. A beacon of light. Alex Amalfi. Up high. Two and oh.
Down low, gets away from the catcher. Glassburn going to try to score. Oh, no. And he will. Oh. Well, the, the catcher was uh, walking that ball very casually, too casually, and Glassburn took advantage of the opportunity. It's now a 10-3 post-77 lead. Wow. How about them apples? Uh -oh. Wind up in the pitch. Down low, there's a walk. A one out walk to Amalfi. He looks like he's running better. He hit one off his toe on Sunday. That would put him on the DL, but seems to be running fine today. Dante Diavanzo will step in. He was he earlier was my Gandhi nominee, but since Sean Jewett back picked the runner, he's my Gandhi nominee. Gets a, a piece of this one, and it's caught by the second baseman. Two away. Got to wipe the blood off that baseball. It was murdered. Nick Calabrese will step in. First pitch low, one and oh. Alex Amalfi and Jackson Horning were featured in the Metro West Daily News in their baseball section for all scholastics. And now these oh, they Amalfi's pick them off. in the pickoff. And now it's dropped by the shortstop, trying to go to second, and he's safe. Oh. Well, the umpire says he's safe. Oh, I don't. Wow, that's a base running blunder. He got picked off. Well, he ends up getting a stolen base. He anyway. would have never heard the end of it if he got tagged out. He'll take it. You gotta put the blame on the first base coach there for allowing that to happen. With a right handed pitcher nonetheless. There's a ball. Coach Obed will have to talk to his coaching staff and make sure you don't get picked up by a right-handed pitcher. Hit high in the air, foul territory, and be caught. Out, be out of play, though. Oh, no, they're going to oh, give it to him. They're going to ring him up. Post 77 plates two more runs. They lead it 10 to three <laughs> as we head to the top of the seventh. Waltham down to their final three outs. Up next on the Ashton Legion Baseball Network. Ah. Top of the seventh inning. Waltham down to their final three outs. All kinds of defensive changes for post 77. Jackson Horning is now the catcher. Andrew Sternick out in right field. Shortstop Cole Glassburn. And Lawrence Tang is over at first base. Back where he started. Alex Amalfi is the new left fielder. Brandon Grover on the hill. That's right. So that means there's a new center fielder as well. Ah. And I believe that was Rankatori who moved over to center. Oh, an overthrow by the catcher there. Uh, he's uh, saying he's out of practice. You got to throw the ball right back to the pitcher. Don't want to affect the pitcher's rhythm. Swing, wow. Swing and a miss. Some good velocity there. By yeah, Grover. he'll be a Tri-Valley League uh, looker next year. Wind up in the pitch. Swing and a miss. Oh. Next time we'll see Jackson Hornung with... Uh, the tools of ignorance will be out at Skidmore College in New York. Matt O'Toole will step in, one away. I heard Brandon Grover had gas, so I didn't think he had 93 octane. Down low. Wind up and the pitch, swing and a miss. For those at home want to appreciate 
good hands. Take a look at the way Jackson Hornung handles his mitt. Sticks the ball. And this is hit high in the air to center field and caught. Two-way. That'll bring up Justin Morin, the first baseman. Could this be it for tonight, Tom? Could be. Wind up and the pitch down low. Is this Brandon Grover's first appearance of the season? It's a good question. Two and oh. Take a look. You know, you do have the stats as well, Larry. Uh, I'd have to bend over to look at them. <laughs> this is indeed Brandon Grover's first appearance on the mound this season. I'm impressed. You might see more of him if he keeps pitching like this. He's the missing link. And this is up the middle, takes a couple hops, fielded by Glassburn, throw to first, got him. Six to three for out number three, and post 77 is going to walk away with the 10 to three victory. A great win here for Ashland. They weren't playing for much. They have the number one spot in the zone playoffs all wrapped up, but they get a nice win anyway. And they improved to 14 and one on the season. 10 runs on nine hits, four post 77. They committed one error. Waltham, three runs on seven hits. They committed three errors. A nice win here for Ashland as they take down Waltham 10 to three post 77. We'll wrap up zone play tomorrow night against Natick right here at Ashland Middle School. 545 scheduled start time for that game about Post 77 looking forward to the zone playoffs where they will play at Mahan Field in Natick. It will start on Saturday. The game will be at either 4 o'clock or 7 o'clock p.m. And then they'll play Sunday as well at a time to be determined. But the final score for the final time, Ashland Post 77 improves to 14 and 1 as they take down Waltham 10 to 3. For Larry Sacklad, I'm Tom Nappy. We thank you for watching Ashland Legion Baseball. Take care, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you again soon.